We're so excited beginning March 6th and 7th, the first weekend of our new cycle, to begin having youth and young adult servers again. This video is an intermediate video just to give you some basic ideas and to help you cover in between training times where we're meeting here with you in person. So today we are gathering together with uh, a couple of people here and with one of our mass coordinators and you'll get to know them through this video. You probably already know them anyway. We are still in COVID time, so we have masks on, but we are so glad that we said, as we said, that we can go back to letting the mass coordinator coordinate a mass, which Sylvia represents, and we also have uh, Doug Hoffman and Marianne Lanesh, and then some others fill in at funerals and stuff, like Butch and some, we have backups if something should happen. Uh, but these are the three that you'll normally be working with. Um, and then I'm always floating around. So Jeff Schutte is here with us today. If you'll come over where they can see you a second. And Jeff is the coordinator of our youth young adult server ministry. So Jeff will be the one that's working with you a lot and coordinating with our mass coordinators. And then also in today's training, we have Jacob and Daniel. So good to have you two with us. And uh, so glad that you're going to be part of this training today. We will have a paper for you uh, that's taped into both the vesting sacristy and the working sacristy so that notes and refreshers are always there as well. Uh, so this is going to be a short video where we just cover some things. The first thing that you guys will notice starting March 6th and 7th, as you'll be part of it, and as those of you who are worshiping that weekend will see, is that we're going back to uh, a youth or young adult server, but we're still remaining with one for the time being due to social distancing. That server will be part of the procession, though, so we'll begin processing at the door. So, Daniel, if you'll be uh, our Vanna White for this section, if you would, our model, uh, the cross will return to our vesting sacristy, if you would go and get that. So right before Mass time, uh, Father's typically there with you. We're all together. Jeff will be coordinating you, and Jeff, you'll just make sure they're ready to come to the back center door. This is a high traffic area with the way that the ushers work, and so what we will do is we bring everybody in the center door, if you've not been here in a while, to get them seated and spaced properly. And when it comes time for Mass to start, I'll shift to entrances at the side door. That way we can block this off for our procession. So on the notes here, it says that the server carrying the processional cross leads the procession uh, once the words of the opening hymn begins. It's a little bit more like the old days, right, Daniel? Excellent. So, and then at the, as, as he processes in, and um, Jeff, will you be father? And we'll all just kind of follow along here. Now, the foot of the altar steps, this, uh, all directions when I give a left or right are always facing the altar. So at the foot of the uh, altar steps, the server is going to stand left to center. So it would just be one person and then our, our priest, your, your father right now. So pretend like that was a two-person procession even though we were following along. And when the priest uh, 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 says the celebrant, whoever the celebrant is, typically the priest bows, then you're going to uh, bow your head, Daniel. All right, then the server's going to take the cross to the hall by the sacristy. So muscle memory may have you take it a different direction, but we need to make sure that we take it, and that's why you're standing to the left, to the hall by the sacristy. I can't get this on the film, but there is a stand for it in that room. And Jeff will make sure you know what it is, won't you, Jeff? You're back to Jeff now, no longer father. So if you look this way, they'll see you, see you talking to him. Uh, all right, excellent, excellent. All right, so now, after you've taken the cross... At this point, yes, but that might change by March 6th. Yes, so. So some things that are different up here is uh, if the lector has a family, then the lector is still on this pew like they used to be. When there's two lectors, because of social distancing, first lector will be in this pew, second lector will be in this next pew. If one of the lectors is only one person, especially at the 1115 Mass, for seating and spacing, we're going to have the single lector sit up here if they're comfortable. The server sits between the credence table and the altar. And of course, you're in an alb and, and everything's normal as far as that goes. The Roman Missal in the center of the altar.
All right, and this is a part next that changes because the server's going to bring a tray with the vessels over. Now, Daniel is picking this up for the first time on screen, so I'm going to give you guys some helpful hints as I give it to Daniel. Thanks for being our, our guinea pig server, if you would. The tray's a little heavier than you'd expect, and there are tabs on the bottom so it does not slide. So you're going to lift it up above the edge of the table here, and then you're going to set it straight down where you want it. At this point, the celebrant would remove the items from the tray, and the server would return the tray to the credence table, placing it horizontally, or if you're a computer person, landscape, okay? So we're going landscape for computeries. We're going to pretend like there's a priest here. He's removed everything. He's put it where he wants. And go ahead and take your tray back. Now, if when my adults are serving that have been served, landscape. Yep, there you go. Perfect. When my adults are serving, this will be a little new for them for a while because uh, we have been taking the wine over with the tray, but we are back a little bit more to some normalcy. So at this point, you would take the wine and the water to the priest. Yes, and he would take it, and he would do his, his don't set it on the altar, so, yep, and, and then he would do his, his uh, uh, pouring, and then you would bring them both back, just like you used to in the old days. You're going to set the wine down. You're going to pick up the towel, place it over your arm, and you're going to bring the pitcher in the bowl. All right, and then the Father's going to uh, go ahead, and he's going to continue with uh, the prayers there, and he's going to continue with this rinsing, and then you're going to return this to the table. Yes, Sylvia? Okay, um, the clue Father has given Mary Ann, Doug, and I, when you hand him the water, hand him the water with the, with the, uh, uh, the holder to him. All right, so we want the handle, if you'll demonstrate that, Daniel, to where Father can easily grasp the water pitcher. it back to you with the handle toward you or he may just hand it to you and you have to like grip it from the bottom to make sure you've got a good grip on it all right very good so we're making it easier for the priest because remember we're trying not to be seen we're only moving when there's movement and we are there as servers so we're there to serve in the mass and the other thing is father really likes it when you can be there after he bends over like this and then he stands up to wash hands if you are right there not standing over here to bring the water in the bowl to him, but right there so he can just turn around and wash his hands. That's the same as it yeah. was. Yeah, same as it was, but if it's been a while, these are good, helpful hands. Anything, Jeff, you think of, Sylvia, you think of, we're adding them in there. All right, so now, yes. So now we're to the communion, right? And once the ministers are distributing communion, the server is going to remove the Roman Missal and the vessels from the altar. If you want to go reenact that. Now, remember the vessels over here are, you no longer have a tray, so you're never taking more than two vessels at a time, one per hand. It's a very reverent time. We're not trying to take more than would be appropriate. If there are concelebrants, such as Father Shine and Father Dorman, the server waits until they've received communion before beginning to clear the altar. That's just one of those things that if you normally serve at a Mass where there's not concelebrants and now you have one, it's just something you need to remember. Uh, they need to, to receive their communion first and then we cleanse, clear the altar. Once this is done, the server returns to their chair. And, are, and all throughout this Mass, the key here is that the focus is on the Mass. And the focus is on uh, the, the sacraments, the focus is on the celebrant. It's not on the server. So having a mass coordinator back helps us with one of the number one uh, concerns we had, but we couldn't fix during recording of videos, like we're doing right now, which is a lot of movement behind the readers, which is caught on the camera while they're reading. So when you're here as a server, you're reverent, you're attentive, you're focused, 
and you're not moving except for the key times that we're talking about, right? And then when you return, as a server, you can stand with your hands folded or you can kneel. I know some of my servers like to kneel. You can kneel. But the focus needs to be, even if you're kneeling, on kneeling reverently, standing back up reverently, keeping your focus on the altar. Sound good? Awesome. Yes. The other thing is, when Father comes back to wash and everything, the server really should stand over to the side so he's not in his way. Right. Because he, he told us that when he said, I'd like you to be in front, just move out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good. I'll go. Right over here. It gives him room to come here. Now, a couple more things at the end of this communion, right, once it's all finished. Um, if there are hosts to be returned to the tabernacle, the mass coordinator does this. So you don't have to worry about that part, okay? But if you're not busy during communion, you have a communion minister here, maybe one at the gathering space, one here. You're watching attentively, and you can meet them, take their tray, and return it over here to the credence table so they can sanitize and get back to their place of worship. All right, very good. Go ahead and cut it there, Steve. Segment now, the closing hymn. So we've come to the end of communion. As we said at the end of our last video, the server has gathered the, the communion plates back uh, from people. If he's not busy, he or she's not busy, brought it over to the credence table. If all the hosts are not consumed, that's when the mass coordinator comes out returns uh, to the cyborium, to the tabernacle. In this last section, at the beginning of the closing hymn, okay, paying attention through Father's prayers, paying attention through everything else, at the beginning of the closing hymn, you're going to go and get the processional cross. We're singing. You're coming down the stairs or the ramp. I find the ramp to be a little smoother in procession. I haven't heard Jeff much. You're my director. What would you say? I agree. All right. We got Jeff on, on the camera and the microphone. Now, you're going to stand back here a little bit. Yes, and we have this paper for you, and we're also going to go over this with you the first couple of times. You're going to go to the center. Then the celebrant and the deacon are going to stand in front of you. This prepares us to process a little easier, shows a little bit more social distancing, so you're back farther than you used to be. Perfect. All right. So, Jeff says... It will be the same position as in the past. We're standing just even with the communion or with the rails up here uh, for the exiting. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. When the celebrant and the deacon bow, then the server is going to turn and lead them out of the church. The procession, if you follow me up the aisle from wide to font there, Steve, you've probably seen this if you've been back to Mass. You're going to return to the vesting sacristy. The priest, the deacon are going to go straight out the door. Yeah, you're going to actually go in for social distancing. So you just keep processing all the way in the room. A reminder, because I've seen it several times, don't forget to lower the cross. Sometimes it's the simple things. And then the priest and the deacon will process out. Thank you for joining us on this brief video.